Hello, welcome back to my studio. Today I've got a lot of things to show you. First of all, I'm going to be looking at a new set of watercolor brushes and then I'm going to test them out in a little watercolor painting and you'll see how they perform and I'll show you a little bit about watercolor as well. So stick around. I'm sure you'll get a lot out of this video. Okay, if you enjoy watercolor painting, you've probably encountered brushes like these. These are mop brushes and they are made from squirrel hair. They are quite versatile because they also form a nice point as well when they're wet. And these are pretty much the watercolor brushes that I use all the time. So I was quite interested in these brushes that I obtained from a company called Zen Art Supplies based in England. And they produce these rather attractive looking brushes called the Black Tulip range of brushes. Now the big difference with these is that they are made from synthetic squirrel hair. So the brushes are designed to mimic the uh, functionality of genuine squirrel hair brushes. So what you're looking for there would be a lot of water retention and good ease of movement, good shape, and the brushes return to their original form. Here's an example. This is the cat's tongue brush, as you can see, very distinctive shape. I can see also it is quite soft and there's quite a good body to this brush. So I'm expecting it to hold a lot of water as well and be good for watercolor. Slightly different uh, consistency as you would expect with a synthetic brush. But otherwise, very attractive, nice handle, all the qualities of a good watercolor brush. Now in this set, we get a whole range of brushes. You get two flats, a couple round brushes and a nice rigger brush and of course this tack cat tongue brush probably my favorite one. So I'm going to unbox these quickly and then we'll jump into some painting and see how these brushes perform. Let's have a look at these brushes quickly and get them out of the very nice looking packaging. Some information on the back as well about brush care. So take a look at that. And as you can see, very nice looking brushes. Obviously, an important thing with watercolor brushes is you want them to hold a lot of water and keep their shape. So let's try out a few of these. I'll get some water onto this brush and it is nicely wet. I can see it's holding a lot of water. Let's get some color onto this. water onto that brush and we can get some nice loose marks. So very nice handling, returns to shape. Let's try the cat tongue brush. A lot of water on there as you can see. And of course these very nice looking round brushes, extremely versatile. And coming to a good point, you can do some fine work with these as well. And this beautiful rigger brush. And all keeping their shape and working very well. So let's put these to the test in a quick painting. I've done a quick sketch and I'm going to be using a bit of uh, Daniel Smith watercolors. You can see the reference I'm working from, which is a nice warm countryside. And starting off with a quick wash of warm color. So this is just a deep yellow with a bit of red thrown in. You can see my watercolor palette is a complete mess, but I try to keep it that way actually. 
mainly dividing it up between warm and cool color. So once the first wash has dried, I'll get into adding a bit more color to it. We work on the basis of just getting the color in first, as much color as I can, and then get into the darker values. Uh, being a oil painter for the most part, painting in watercolors definitely has me thinking and I have to keep reminding myself, get in all those colors first, reserve some white as well for the highlights, which I've done in the foreground, and in the background as well, it's mostly um, light wash of uh, that warm yellow. Dropping in some of this beautiful orange. And one thing about Daniel Smith watercolors, of course, is strong uh, chroma, uh, strong saturation. You're basically getting the best uh, pigment mixture. So I will try and make the best of that. Just some sweeping strokes to get a bit of scumble and highlight on that paper. I'm using Fabriano paper and that's pretty much my go-to. 300 grams cold press paper is my favorite. I use that for many things, not just watercolor but also gouache painting. So getting a bit of um, atmospheric perspective in the back there, just a soft warm wash letting the paper come through and I'll be focusing on getting rich color in the foliage and bushes in the foreground and then eventually bring in some cooler shadows well that's the idea anyway fairly simple painting now one thing as I mentioned I paint normally in what in um, oils of course and it's always great to add in the thick lights at the end of the painting with oils but in watercolor you got to think the other way around the lights already have to be in and now you get into the darks the shadow colors mostly ultramarine blue and some cobalt and uh, letting that work with the reds and oranges to kind of make a, a sort of a violet or chromatic violet. Swapping over now to the round brushes and they make these beautiful strokes. You could do some great calligraphy with this as well. Pulling up shapes pretty quickly and uh, I'm a bit out of practice with watercolor, so this is a real stretch for the old brain box. But uh, nice to change as well. It's just a um, change of mediums is good. So also I have the approach of um, strong values. Right, Strong value contrasts in any medium is good so i'm keeping an eye on building things up towards getting those strong values in the foreground nice warm and cool color as well that's very important lovely bit of yellow ochre in the middle ground there now bring in some greens and this is um you know the thing with watercolor is it's not what you're doing with the brush it's it's what the painting does when you walk away um, things dry and move around and uh, the best parts with watercolor happen without you being involved you just hope you set the ball in motion and uh, look at the end result once it's dried and see if if you've got what you're trying to trying to say then that's the main thing You can see these cool blues changing everything, making the the painting a much more dramatic, stronger. Using this beautiful rigger to get some fence posts in and 
It really is a stunning brush, this rigger. So I have to play around with it and throw in little lines everywhere, naturally. And good strong darks to finish things off. I'll also maybe drop in a bit of uh, cerulean blue to get some sort of sweet, cool blues in the shadows. But this is pretty much doing the trick now, and uh, I just got to know when to stop. Let's retouch a few of those. So yeah, I think uh, we'll bring this in and uh, sit back and just watch the conclusion. But I must say, brushes are working well, this big uh, flat brush. Look at that, nice sharp lines, big bold lines as well, and shapes. Very nice indeed. Few little accents here and there. Let's get off the tape and uh, have a let it dry and then have a look and see. Well, I must say I enjoyed using these brushes and I'm definitely going to be using them a lot more in the future. If you're looking for an alternative to the genuine squirrel hair brush and something that is perhaps a bit more affordable as well, you can find these at Zen Art Supplies. Just look them up online and see if you can find them at your local store as well. Well, that's it for this video. Remember to subscribe. Look for the free course up here and uh, I'll see you in the next video coming up soon. Cheers for now.